effect that will have on our uh, water revenues. We still don't know what else measures the state could force us to take. And there's always that things that are out there that, that we don't know. I mean, there's always surprises that come up. But this is a very conservative approach. And I think it's a very solid budget that we're submitting to your board. And we're not asking you to vote on this. This is just for information. We'll come back on the 25th, I believe, for adoption. Yes. So that is the operating budget. Do you have any questions before I move on to the CIP budget? Seeing none. <clears throat> now, capital improvement projects are generally more than $50,000 anywhere from one to three years. And we have a budget that was approved in 1314 that has funding for some projects, and not all those projects are completed. So those fundings roll over to the next year. And this is kind of a rolling budget. We will take a look at, and if you, we haven't, uh, actually I have a handout that's at the, that's a separate handout for you that's at, uh, provided that goes, that shows the water and the sewer CIP budgets. It's a two page handout. This is just a summary of the projects. I'm going to summarize them in the water, wastewater, and then I'll talk about the funding sources. Um, the new project is genuine AD transmission line for 360,000. That particular line item, we're just looking at this particular point in time for some design work. It's going to be a significant construction project as we move forward, and we won't really know the total cost of the project until we get to the, the bid, until design is complete. But what I'm showing you is the cost for fiscal year 14 15. If you look at this page here, page number one for new water projects, you'll see that it's a little over $4.1 million project at this particular point in time. We're only at this particular point asking for funding for 14-15, and that's that shaded column under cash flow. Under carryover projects, we have the regular tank replacement. That's where we're getting 75% uh, funding from the OES grant. Uh, Reach 3A pipeline project. Um, that's about a $5 million project. We should go into construction next year. And depending upon how that process works, some of the construction costs will carry over into 15, 16 as well because of the construction season up the hill. But we're asking for $3.5 million. We, when, if for some reason the costs change when we do go out to bid and actually have the construction contract, bring it to your board. If there requires an adjustment at that time, we'll bring it to your board for that adjustment. But these are preliminary numbers. The tank management plan is a carryover. Uh, the tech pipe replacement, we, that's a carryover project. It's been scaled back a little bit. And um, my fault, I left it in the, I, the genuine Navy tank should just be above that eliminated. It's a new project. And then flying acres. That project will be completed uh, next fiscal year, probably July, but we'll still be having payments ongoing probably through August and September as we clear that out. But that's being funded solely from the assessment district, but it is a capital project that we're managing. Quick question before you leave that one. Yes. Three and a half million there for the past pipeline. Is that the entire pipeline or just for a portion of it? That's reached three acres, which is about 18,000. Okay, so it's just one part of the other port. No, that's, that's the entire industry. But that number might be a little low. We're also trying to get 45% grant money from USDA. Okay, that is for the whole pipeline all the way down. Yeah. From Portsmouth to Arnold. No, no, no. Maybe an explanation. I think what he's looking for, Bill, is an explanation is where, where does 3A start and end? Meadowmont. Meadowmont 2. All the way up to Sound. Okay. on the Redwood tank replacement? Yes. You said initially that it was um, 900000 or something, and so this is what we have to pay now? No, this is the budget for it. Okay. It's, it's a, and so, we, we've already paid some to date. Right, just, right. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, did Bill just say that 
how much of it is going to be? So 75%, 20, 25% correct. Right. Okay, so this is 20% right here? For the seven, no, the it's, some of it's going to flow into 1560 as well on that sheet down the center. If you see cash flow under fiscal year 1560, some of it will flow into that as well. Some of these projects may take longer than just next year. This is the amount that we're budgeting for the, the upcoming year. No, but what I want to understand is this cost right here, this 704000 it represents 20, our 25%? No. What, this is the cost of what we anticipate spending next fiscal year. If, if you look at the project, the, from the original project, it was 75-25 split. We paid 25% of it. What's the total project cost? That's what 1.2. 1.2. 1. 1. 1. 2. We, we plan to spend 704 next year. We will get reimbursed 75%. Approximately in that time, yeah. Yeah, wow. once we're completed. Yes. Okay, so the, this is not actual cost. This is full cost. Full cost. That's what I have to show Full cost. And if you go out to the right, the funding sources, that shows where the funding sources are coming from. Right. right. Um, in fact, let's go back to that. So if you look at your funding sources here on this sheet, page one, you'll see that for um, the reserves, that's from our special project fund, that's our cost associated with the Redwood 10 project. Okay. The 4.5, 4.6 million cost for capital R and R, that's coming from the loan proceeds and from the rates. Now, as Bill mentioned, we're trying to apply, we're applying for a grant from USDA to help offset that cost, but until we get that, uh, I'm not going to include it. And then we also have some grants coming in for um, the the Red River Tank in the amount of 870000 The Flying Acres is being funded by the Assessment District. That's in the last column to the right. So this kind of goes over the funding sources. I, I want to compliment you on this sheet. It's real clear. It, it gives us a, a real clear understanding of where the money is being taken from. And I apologize for having not exact numbers. I forgot to bring my glasses. <laughs> the plots are a little off. One pair? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wastewater project. We got two new projects. Um, the Valacito Wastewater Storage Pond expansion. That's a project that we submitted under Round Two Implementation Grant for Prop 84, and the Avery Main, Main Lift Station Replacement Project. Uh, these are projects that we've been on our capital R and R list. Some of these projects, I'm going to uh, put a, a qualifier out here. The biggest project here is going to be the Papa Code Lift Station 22 replacement. The cost of that project is estimated at 1.6 million, but until we know, actually know how much it's going to be, we're going to have to hold off on some of these other projects because if it goes over budget for some reason, we may have to scale back some of these projects. Doesn't mean we won't do it, it just may be shifted into the next fiscal year. But we want to include them as this process because we may get into early planning and design for some of these projects, because we want to have them ready to go once the money's available. Carryover, we're continuing to work on the Copper Cove replaying plan. Uh, the 250,000 you see is for construction of a well, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the NCDS permanently shared so we don't have to build a new plant. So what we're trying to do is we're going to set up two uh, vertical turbine pumps to send raw water to the wetlands over there. That will get us out of uh, all the NPDS stuff, and then we can move on to general irrigation. We, we probably save ourselves over $10 million for doing that. And the other thing, too, the West Point Realty Bill, we're asking for $4 million right now. We have the application to make some money for consolidated West Point Realty Bill. Right? The money that you see there is for the study. Yeah. Right. Even the 130000 you see is, is grant money. Yeah, right. That's the study. It's been form right now. What what do you see as far as, as the consolidation savings? We're figuring, we're figuring out four million bucks, but it's a, we can't, it's, it's a DAC, so we're going to put a 100% principal with the given to it. Filling out the construction grant application right now, we're in communication with the state right now, and 
and um, how we're going to do on that. Well, we think we're going to get the money by, by the end of the year. Cool. Uh, some of these projects, again, were part of the budget, CIP budget that you approved back in December, I believe it was, when we finished up with the capital R and R, got the money. I say the Force Meadows, Force Main, and uh, Copper Cove, List Station 15 and 18 Electrical. We're also planning on doing probably a misnomer when I say master plan updates. It's a capacity fee update for Copper Cove Sewer and Lock and Tennis Sewer. So we should work. We're currently working on Jenny Lynn Water and Copper Cove Water right now. Once we finish those, we'll move on to these. Are we bringing in somebody to do the master plan updates? Yes. Who, who are we bringing in? I'm not sure about Copper Cove and Lock and Ten at this point because we generally want to bid. Bid. We have a system that we set up the same thing. We did. We did. We just did Evans Pass. We have the same guys doing uh, Jenny Lynn and, uh, and uh, Copper Cove right now. They can do the same thing. For the yeah. We have a methodology that we need to go out Peterson Bruce said is doing a kernel. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Peterson and Bruce said. Yes, but they're not under, we, we haven't uh, made any proposals for the master plans for actually capacity charge updates for the heck yeah. for uh, lock and tender pop code at this point. Yeah, they're not master plans, those are no. capacity, capacity, capacity charges. Yeah. And if you look at page two of this handout, on the wastewater side, again, there's cash flows. What we're looking for approval in, in two weeks will be on the cash flow for 1415, uh, 2.28 million. And the rest of the, and the funding comes, sources are listed over on the right hand column. 40,000 expansion funds for the capacity fee updates. 1.6, 1.7 million, or 1.9 million dollars, capital R and R, and grants for the uh, West Point Wilsonville study at this particular point in time. Now, one of the things I did is to go back and do a projection of our revenues, anticipated revenues from the capital R and R program. Look at those. Factor in our debt service payments because we pay debt service in September and March of every year. And then look at to see if we have enough cash flow between the proceeds and the revenues collected and we are fine for the next two years. Actually three years in looking at some of these that go out. But the projects that we're looking at funding here, we have, six, we have adequate cash flow and our projections are pretty darn close. Uh, through nine months I'm off by maybe I've underestimated sewer by about $1,500 cumulative, and water I've underestimated by about $4,000 cumulative over nine months. Well, Jeff, I wanted to uh, reiterate uh, Director Stump's sentiment um, about this um, sheet. And it, this is it's been fuzzy. It seems like in, in recent months, and it, this clears it up. These la this last section about uh, where funding is coming from, and uh, this, this looks very good. good. Great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this might be a little bit off topic, but I'd like to bring it in. The, several months ago, first part of the year, we were told how you, they were, how staff picked the, the people to, to do this stuff. Uh, it was on a professional level, and so it wasn't a bid process, and so the process was how to identify the, the people that we were going to be working with. I was never real clear on that process. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe at some point into the future we can, that process can be brought back to us so that we understand how these people are being picked if it's not on a uh, competitive basis. How would you, we're gonna, it's funny because the injury can be asking. I'm making an adjustment to the, the process that was, was sort of used. And we're gonna go back to the district policy, which is anything over $100,000 has to be uh, our repeat out the door. That's, and what I'm doing is we're doing we're defining the scope of work. We're just firing all the rest of that stuff. So we're I've suspended some of the uh, work that was being done and done a reevaluation of, of how things are going. And I can I believe the engineering committee wanted me to set up a meeting to move some of the stuff I was doing. So I'll I'll get that done probably in a month. But yeah, we're going to go to a more conventional way of doing stuff, actually to follow the, the, the policy here. Thank you very much.
The total CIP budget, as you have the, as you'll see under the bottom of page two, uh, under fiscal year 14, 15, is about approximately 9.6 million. And we're making good headway into this. And between, like I said, between the revenues that we receive for capital R and R, the loan proceeds, which uh, you know we got very very favorable rates for that, and the grant money, um, this is, I, I feel very confident in this. However, if we do happen to get grants for the um, USDA for the REACH 3A, at that particular point in time, when we submit the grant, or actually, you know, get the final paperwork in, we will be coming back to your board for your approval of that. We can't, obviously, with, as you're aware, whenever we go through any grant process, acceptance of any grants, it comes back to your board because we want to make you aware of any matching re requirements or such. But we will also, if it reduces the amount of our funding requirements for certain projects, we can then shift those capital R and R dollars down to complete other projects as well. It allows them to move ahead of schedule. So we're very diligent in our work in securing grant funds. They do come with strings attached, and you have to be mindful of that. And that's when we, when we do come back to your board, we will identify all those strings and any matching components. At this particular point in time, um, I'm open for questions and just wanted to let you know that we will be back in front of your board in two weeks at a public hearing, house hearing or workshop, for approval of the budget as submitted. That's going to be at our next meeting, June, the June 25th meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you. Uh, anyone else have any questions, comments? Just. Just to reiterate that uh, our debt service is coming off of our rate increase for the, uh, the CIP. For the capital R program, that is correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Good job. Okay, moving on to uh, item six on our agenda committee reports. Committee reports. <clears throat> we had a finance committee meeting last week, and um, we went over basically everything that everyone saw today, with a few small changes. Um, it's the only the only thing that the the committee connected with, as far as what we just received from Jeff, was the difference in department names. It's going to take us a year or two to get up to speed and recognizing now what what these different departments mean and who's associated with them. Can we just put signs on the room? Yeah, that would help. <laughs> um, the other thing that was brought up in the Finance Committee was uh, how to interact with with our rate payers better. Um, there's, we, we recognize that um, things change pretty dramatically on the electronic front. So uh, being able for people to be understand what's going on on our, our web page, uh, getting the documents that they're interested in getting on the web page, being able to find things on the web page, pay their bills on the web page, do these kind of things electronically um, is going to be really, really important into the future. Um, Communications is huge. We need to do be doing a better job ongoing, not just right now during the drought. And the web page is critical to that. So uh, I know that, that Scott and I both are real, real excited about this process, and we'd really like to see this thing take off soon, uh, or at least do some investigation so that we can recognize which direction we need to be moving in because we feel this is really important. But other than that, did you have any? Any comments? No, you covered uh, the finance committee meeting pretty well. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Do any you, other committee reports? Do you want to talk about the um, well and scenic or? What's up next? Yeah, it's, on the, it's on the, it's on the <coughs> legislative or what is it? I yeah, we got it's, it's, it's got its own item. Uh, okay. It's, That's fine. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's own committee. Okay. Any other committee reports besides the Moke River Wild and Scenic? No, I, we, we did meet, I don't know if we met the last time with the engineering committee, but we are interested in looking at what, what consultants are doing what for us and, and to make sure that that list is prioritized and, and then uh, have uh, staff look at um, what's, what are necessities and what aren't. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. 
uh, and, when, and is an engineering committee set at this point? The meeting set? I don't believe so. Okay. Any other committee reports? Okay, we'll go on to uh, which is a committee, but the McCollum River item seven, McCollum River Wild and Scenic Designation uh, Committee. Uh, one of you two gentlemen wish to report. Let me start. Yeah, sure. Um, this is moving really, really fast. Um, we've Jeff will report out on the East Bay Mud meeting that took place yesterday. He attended that. I was involved with the UMRA meeting. Um, we are having a special meeting of UMRA on the 20th at 11 a.m. at Par D to discuss wild and scenic. Uh, it's, it kind of hinges upon what Jeff is gonna talk about. It's a critical meeting. Uh, we're, we're working with all of the water agencies in this region, Amador, Calaveras, and San Joaquin, uh, trying to, to figure out how we can can be um, we can be supportive of wild and scenic as long as it protects the future of the residents of the counties. Uh, this is our focus. The, the future is our job as as water uh, water district people. We need to to be making sure that our our residents in Calaveras County have that future water supply. And I think that we can meld those two together and make everyone uh, semi-happy, but we can't rest until this, this actually takes place. Uh, we've got multiple uh, lobbyists working on this. We've got basically every major water agency in California has come out, Aqua has come out against it, Mountain Counties has come out against it, uh, uh, Northern California agencies have come out against it. I, it's, from a, a standpoint of water, this is, this is a, a critical issue. It has a, a real negative effect on Calaveras and it has a real negative effect on Amador. So we, we need to be able to have something that's functional and everyone is working really, really hard. The, it went into the, the wrong committee in the assembly for whatever reason and everything in Sacramento's political but it went to natural resources. And that's, that's one of those kind of things where we have a, they have committee meeting that's going to take place um, 23rd. And we need, we need to do everything we possibly can to, to try and be successful in the, the, the committee meeting on the 23rd in order to protect our residents. So everyone's working really, really hard. Jeff and I have been spending huge amounts of time trying to, to make this thing go positive. And we have another meeting in, on the 18th in Amador County, uh, trying to, to figure out how to, to make the, the lobbyists and all of the water agencies more productive at the assembly meeting. What time is that meeting on the 18th? I haven't got a time yet. It you was, know there's a camera meeting that day. I'm not on camera. I know, but, but all, everybody who's at I don't and Amador will be over here for that one. I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I, remember. Just got, I just all, got the date the, this morning about 7 o'clock, okay. so I don't know anything more about it. Well, um, uh, that Don was giving you the optimistic view. Um, I, I did attend uh, uh, the East Bay Mud uh, board meeting yesterday. It was a real joy to drive down to Oakland. Um, it was... Uh, it was eye-opening to say the least. Uh, much of the discussion that we've been hearing here locally about how this won't affect our water rights and, and uh, how, uh, how this is a wonderful thing for the county, um, it was made very clear yesterday at that board meeting by uh, Sierra Club members and by Pete Bell from the Conservancy that they know damn well that this is gonna affect us significantly and they don't care. Uh, Pete Bell made, a, made it clear. He, uh, he said that uh, he knows that we need the water for the Highway 12 corridor someday. They don't care. They, they just flat don't care. Uh, they know that, there is, that this will limit us from, even if there is a project that it perhaps could be developed upstream, uh, wild and scenic designation will remove any, uh, any ability to get any state or federal funding for any project on the river. 
thus making any planning or, or, or construction uh, uh, a, a unsurmountable hurdle. Uh, it will eliminate that. And it doesn't mean you can't do a project, but you better be able to do it by yourself. And as you well know, these projects could cost you know hundreds of millions of dollars and take uh, decades to accomplish. Um, they don't care. Uh, it's uh, the, the East Bay, but more the East Bay uh, board, um, thankfully, uh, chose to stay the course and, and to continue to oppose uh, Wild and Scenic uh, at this time. They they have uh, they didn't table it. They 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 actually voted to continue to do the exact same thing. It was kind of odd that how that went down, but. Uh, Jeff, just to stop you for a minute, how, how was that vote? The vote was uh, three to four. Um, it's very clear that there's, there's uh, four environmental, uh, or three environmental um, absolute yes votes. They're gonna vote wild and scenic every single time, the board chair being one of them. And there are uh, three, uh, I believe, uh, and the, the main sentiment, which was really uh, refreshing from, from Bill Patterson, from uh, Frank Mellon, uh, from uh, Katie Folks, and from John Coleman was, they don't wanna lose the cooperation and, and the successes that we've had through UMRA. And, and, and Bill Patterson probably said it as well as anybody. He, you know, and he, he basically said, you know, imagine, because we formed UMRA years ago to protect the uh, pg e was gonna have to divest, uh, the, is it Project 137 or? They were gonna have to divest Project 137. Uh, we formed UMRA, Upper Macaulay Watershed Authority, to, to in, the, in the case that the bankruptcy judge made them force it, we were gonna try to acquire it, so we had control over the river. And, and Bill Patterson and John Coleman and Katie Folks recognized that it was the upcountry groups that without our help, they never would have been able to do that, and most likely, uh, uh, PG&E would have uh, sold that facility uh, to uh, another private company that would have ran it however the hell they wanted. Uh, so they're very appreciative of that. They, they don't want, those four do not want to uh, uh, leave us out in the cold. I mean, believe it or not, a, a Sierra Club member uh, stood up and said, you know, there are 30 times more people uh, than in all of Amador County that are your ratepayers. You need to listen to your ratepayers. I mean, they actually made that statement in public that basically says, screw the people in Amador County. You know, let's do what's good for us. And, and unfortunately, the bill as it's amended right now is only good for one water agency, and that water agency is East Bay Mud. I'm sure they find it ironic that the very groups that have blocked uh, any efforts for them to increase their water supply um, has just handed them the golden goose. And, I, and I, I think it's very tough for these four board members to sit there and say, uh, you know, I, I can't believe that they're not silently smiling saying, you guys, Thank you. I don't think you know what you did, but thank you. Thank you, Conservancy. But I, but I think in their hearts, they're trying to be uh, uh, true to the upcountry agencies that have helped them come so far. And they recognize that we're, we're much stronger up here together. And if, if this vote does go the way it is, uh, you can forget about UMRA. We've, already, we've received over a million dollars in grants to uh, make improvements on, on the watershed uh, through UMRA. Uh, we'll never get another one of those. I mean, UMRA will be, as far as I'm concerned, uh, nothing, there be, there will, there'll be no point. So with, with that being said, uh, um, I think that uh, we've got an uphill battle. I think that uh, it mainly needs to go, uh, our, our uh, lobbying pressure needs to more go toward our supervisors. I know that Cliff Edson, um, I have emails from him uh, stating that he wants this issue to be reconsidered. I know that their board has asked for it to be to have a study session, I don't think that'll occur in a timely manner that will be effective. But uh, uh, it's very clear that, it, and I always I want to try to make people understand this may be 30 years away from now, but people will look back at our board of supervisors and they will remember their names as the people who gave away the prosperity for the west end of the county. I mean, if we can't access McCombie River water 30 years from now, those areas, and, and maybe we can serve Valley Springs out of Hogan, but economically for us to serve uh, 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 Wallace and Burson, I find it very, very difficult to project how we're gonna accomplish that in some sort of an economic fashion. 
And I believe that Burson and Wallace won't be here 30 years from now because they're all on groundwater. Those communities, I believe, will be gone. And it'll be our Board of Supervisors' action that was a catalyst to this because they are standing alone. They are standing alone. If you look at the, at the agencies who have rejected Wild and Scenic, you've got us, five to nothing. You've got Amador County, five zero. Amador County Water Agency, five zero. Jackson, Jackson Valley Irrigation District, five zero. I know there are other agencies. San Joaquin County yesterday voted five zero, I believe, to reject it. And that's, a, that's another thing Stockton, that- Stockton the, East. Stockton East has voted to reject it. And we've got, what do we have? We have eight yes votes out of all the agencies that have, that have voted uh, to a, a support or oppose. We've got our supervisors and we've got three East Bay board members. That's, that's all that is voted for this and you have all this other uh, uh, public agency rejection of mm -hmm. Wild and Scenic because it is so bad. And that, actually we were four to one here. I think it's important. Oh, that's, well, but it, we're, the four to one was, was I, he does not support it. He, no. he didn't want it worse than us. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's that the way he sense. wrote, wrote voiced, uh, I, think, did, I think it's important uh -huh. to note that it's not wild and scenic. It's 1199 that's the problem. Well, and, and, and to get back to the language, because it keeps, getting, it keeps drawing attention to it shall not harm the river. It's like, yeah, you can do anything you want as long as it may not harm the river. And that decision as to what may harm the river is it, we're shifting that away from the normal CEQA processes and, and things that are incredibly onerous. I mean, there's a, there aren't any more reservoirs and, and, and it's a very difficult thing to do already. The river is protected. There's no threat to the river. But, but so, so it's, it's, it's simple language. It'll say you can do this, this, and you can do this, and this, this, as long as it, you don't harm the wild and scenic flows. Or as, and it doesn't even say that you do not, it, if it could occur, you know, if it's possible, if somebody can prove that it may someday harm the free flowing nature of the river. And I was just thinking about our, you know, we're getting ready to pull uh, diversion out of uh, the middle fork. I mean, what if we ever wanted to increase that diversion? It would be rejected. Our confluence, no, no. Is, yeah, the confluence with the uh, affected stretch is just downstream. And therefore, it would affect the free-flowing nature of the river, and it would be rejected. We couldn't even make that application. You can't make an application for a water right on a wild and scenic river. I mean, it's just incredibly bad, and, and I, I hate to tell you that I think it's going to happen. Why did you say that it was the wrong committee, Don? when you said natural resources? Uh, this type of legislation would normally go through Parks and Rec, and that was, uh, everyone anticipated it, everyone saw that was where it was going to be assigned, and then right out of the blue, it went to natural resources, which normally never hears these things. Just, just a couple things to finish up my comments, because uh, I know I've been more lengthy than I normally am, but um, you know, Frank Mellon basically called this what it is, it's, it was an ambush bill. And, and, and seeing as there is no threat to the river whatsoever right now, there's nothing being proposed, uh, uh, he's absolutely right. And, and, and they also, he also talked about you know, silence being a vote. You know, while these agencies are loud, you know, their membership based on the entire population is not, is not that great. While they have time to attend all the meetings and, and they can sway votes, I mean, pe the fact that people, and even our silence, nobody even come, you know, we've had one or two really crappy articles in the newspaper about this thing. You know, I think it's the most important thing that I've ever seen on the, since I've been on the board in 14 years that's come forward, and we can't get anybody to pay attention to it. And, and, the, and the silence matters. I mean, it's just, you know, on both sides. You know, they've got, they may have 8,000 signatures out of 2 million water users that support wild and scenic you know uh, it, it's just it, it doesn't make a lot of sense that this thing is gonna is gonna take the path that it is but you know we have to remember it was this was we were not asked to have any sort of collaborative process that's all we've asked that's what we want now is to have this thing stopped until we can have a collaborative process where where uh, the Conservancy and our Board of Supervisors and East Bay Mud and all the other agencies can have an opportunity to say, how do we preserve the river, which I think 
truthfully, I think the water districts do a great job preserving the river. Uh, we care about water quality as much as anybody else, if not more. But we want to have a, a, a collaborative process where we sit down and, and not just talk about protecting the river, but say, how do we actually serve the, the, our populations, particularly up here in Amador and, and Calaveras counties? Because I can tell you right now, East Bay Mud knows that the language that's in the bill today protects them. They're absolutely certain of it. And thankfully, they have four board members that have enough character to still try to include us in this, in, in this freight train. I mean, right now, we're basically tied on the tracks and the train is coming down the road. Uh, it, that's the state that we're in with Wild and Scenic. Um, I, ahead, I think it's interesting that uh, in, the in the original initial report that East Bay Mud staffs developed when they talked about the Wild and Scenic a month or so ago, they, uh, they stated that the, the Wild and Scenic, as it's, as it's proposed, is beneficial to East Bay Mud. They stated that right in their, their staff report. And no, they, what, yesterday they're talking about, hey, we, got, we know we got what we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. they made it very clear. We got what we want. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's kind of ironic that uh, the flows that we're talking about preserving only exist because of the upstream dams. Stop and think about it. Well, the, 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 what's tricky is with, with climate change, there is no way that we can, pre we can predict that the flows that exist today are going to be there 30 mm -hmm. years from now. We cannot predict that. You know, it, it, the, you know, all the scientists will tell you that it, there's going to be less uh, snowfall and more flash uh, uh, events. And so it is going to be wise just to maintain. It, it may be necessary to maintain the existing flows that we have today uh, to have a larger reservoir above. But it's definitely dependent on Amherst County's uh, potential to manage the, their customers and, and us in the, more so in the future, but definitely someday uh, to have something, some sort of project on that, on that river. I don't think that there's a lot of people in Calaveras County that recognize that we've got 20,000 acre feet of water on the McCallamy. Our residents benefit zero on that 20,000 acre feet. That's a huge amount of water. Who does benefit? East Bay Mud. It flows right into Pardee, right down the, the hill. That's, that's not a bad thing because we don't have the ability to use the 20,000 acre feet. But like Jeff says, this is our future. This is, this is what Calaveras has a potential to look like, either negative or positive. You lose that 20,000 acre feet capability into the future, it's going to shift how Calaveras County is going to look and I'm, I'm right in the face of the supervisors when I say this, they made a huge error and they, have not, they don't have the gumption to stand up and say, we didn't recognize the ramifications, we need to change our mind. This, this is, if we had a real strong group of supervisors, they would stand up and say these things because by now they have to understand what, what they're doing to the future of the county and this is, this is ugly. We don't have a real good history of uh, making good decisions in Calaveras County, and this has got to be one of the worst that I've ever seen. One, one more thing that I'm going to, I had a, I'm remitting yesterday regarding Wild and Scenic, and I want to report out that Foothill Conservancy was in on the, uh, the meeting, and they want to be included in UMRA. So that's going to be on our agenda at the next UMRA meeting, and I want to make sure that the board recognizes that that's something that we're going to have to vote on in the upcoming months, and I want you guys to just recognize it's coming. What do you mean by be on UMRA? It's on the agenda. They want but, but, but what does that mean? It's got to be clarified. They, they want to be a member of them? They want to be they a can. member. Legal is looking at it right now. It's interesting. I think that we, we I think that we, had that conversation years ago, and they, they're, they're not the proper entity to be a part of that JPA. They have to be a public, a public yeah. agency. I think that they're, you know, it's, it's they, we, we talked about them being an advisory at one time, and they, <clears throat> I think that's the role they've always had, but um, it seems like we've already, I mean, we've yeah. dealt with that a decade ago, but we'll see So how much happened. money are we going to spend to make that decision now? I don't know. It'll be immaterial. Well, of course. Um, <laughs> UMRO will be immaterial if Wild and Scenic passes. 
Okay, uh, Jeff and Don, thank you very well, much. I mean, we, we are clear on the dates. Everyone's clear on how fast this is going to occur. They're going to have, uh, we're going to have a number meeting the 20th to try to come up with some language that hopefully will get uh, our supervisors to support and uh, the Conservancy to support um, and Senator Hancock, uh, the Berkeley Senator that wrote the bill that's going to affect our, our future. Um, we'll try to come up with some language uh, that will protect our interest. Uh, on the 23rd, there will be, um, I assume if we can come up with something, we'll ask for an amendment in, at this committee or ask somebody to propose an amendment on the 23rd. Um, but this thing could pass. I think the, um, is it July 3rd when, when the uh, legislative session is over? Yeah. That's a time frame that we're up against here. Okay, again, thank you, uh, you two, for uh, uh, your work on this and your time committed uh, since our last meeting. Um, item eight, item eight uh, legislative update. Anything on legislative update? Just a couple items to throw out there. Um, I understand the president signed a form of a word of bill uh, providing funding for local infrastructure projects. This occurs every once in a great while. The acronym's a little bit different, but it sounds the same. Uh, guidelines, uh, I guess, are estimated to be due out in the fall. And uh, as far as the state water bond goes, I understand there are now uh, roughly seven proposals circulating over the state uh, with a June 26 deadline to get on the November ballot. Time is closing out. That's it. Well, thank you, Larry. Bay Delta issues. Anyone to report on Bay Delta? Um, last week, we had uh, Martin County's had a meeting, and um, both Mark Cowan and uh, Randy Fiorini, the chair. Uh, Randy Fiorini is the chair of the Delta Stewardship Council, and Mark Cowan is is director of DWR. They both spoke to the the direction that uh, Bay Delta is going as far as the BDCP is concerned. It looks, uh, I think there's about 40 more days of looking at the ER, EIR, but the, it looks to me and everything that I'm hearing is that this process is not forthcoming. Uh, there's some serious problems with it. Um, this could easily turn into a, like a 10 year process and uh, there's already rumblings that it's going to turn into another CalFed where it just dies on its own. But it's nothing that we have any direct influence. Uh, I know we're going to offer comments to the EIR, but basically our comments are only going to be uh, comments in such a manner that we can address things later on that they bring forward. So it just keeps the door open for us into the future as far as how it might affect us. That's, that's the best we can do. Uh, someone said that the document itself, if you printed all the pages, was eight or nine feet tall. So it's not anything that, that we are able to, to dig into. I don't know what the biggest problem that we're worried about is flows uh, on the river, uh, what might be required of, of our watersheds. So those are the things that we're looking at, but it's nothing that we're going to be able to deal with in the short term other than commenting on the EIR. Okay, uh, on to uh, reports. Larry Diamond, Interim General Manager report. Uh, we've received uh, a request from Blue Lake Springs for water support and uh, Concurrently, a, an email from uh, California Department of Public Health uh, advocating uh, that we do so. We'll be bringing this back, um, I think, at the next meeting for discussion, possible action. Um, additionally, uh, you know, Bill's been in discussion with CAL FIRE. Maybe you can say a few words about that, but we've received a request for water assistance from them as well. I, I, I just wanted to comment on that. I, I think it's, it needs to be said so that, that everyone recognizes how CAL FIRE comes to us for, for support and how willingly we are in order to help during this incredible uh, upcoming fire season that everybody's freaked out about. One of the big things is Tuolumne County doesn't have enough water for the air base over in, in Tuolumne County. So they're talking about coming to us for the water 
And I'm real excited that, that we're able to help them out on that because this isn't going to be a fun fire season. No. Well, thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Patricia Christensen, anything to report? Nothing to report. Uh, Jeff Meyer? Uh, nothing. Okay, thank you. Mr. Purley, anything to report? Bill, can you come up to the microphone? We can catch a little bit of this. Thank you. So, sorry. I got to get a hand mic to pass around. Yeah. Well, that, that one is more fifty percent. Especially uh, Bill is new. Right now, area one will be completed probably within a week or two. We're trying to work with the homeowner of the uh, Home Mutual Association up there to start getting those guys now. Get their services set up so we can go. We're expecting the whole job to be done by the end of July. So that's one pretty good right now. We're doing about probably about 600, 800 feet a day of pipeline. Okay, plus we're picking up the services too. So we'll be we'll be finished probably July, probably August. We're gonna have the transition going from their system to our system is, is gonna be the major issue. Right now. And, you know, we set customer services sending out letters. We ask uh, the mutual will send out letters and to do whatever we can to notify you right there because about 90 percent of those people don't live there so it makes things a little bit more difficult to communicate with them. but the, the construction is going like gangbusters like these guys you know, they've already done three jobs for the district all came up with so that's kind of what's going on what are what are they doing with the the dirt that they're digging out now the funny thing is they're, they're taking it down to Carson hill so they're, they're swapping the trucks i was asking them what because I saw the trucks going by and we, we gave them a spoils dust drop at the, uh, at the office, so they're not using it. Apparently, they're taking it down to cause and so, so they take one full one down and one full one back. So that's what's going to go on. I don't know why, but that's what they're doing. So, I mean, that's the big thing. No one's, uh, no one's going to be completely offline by the end of uh, June. On the Redwood Tanks issue, we I checked the uh, EMA. Got the Cal Emer uh, website and uh, they're open for NOI, so we're probably going to put in for three more regular tents. And that's about the biggest thing in it going right now. The other thing, too, is I applied for a regional sledge facility uh, uh, grant and I got kind of uh, caught by surprise. We're going to have to do another income survey in the Forest Meadows and uh, Lock and Town area. The Forest Meadows area came out extremely high, shall we say, kind of crowded everybody surprised. They even actually talked to the Homeless Association and asked them, does this sound like a real number? Isn't that where Larry lives? Wait. Actually, what I'm going to do is go around the bullhorn. We need to move to West Point. I don't know where the heck the number came in, but the state came in with a medium household income of 100833 up there which kind of kills us because we were eligible for a grant on this. So what we, and also, they also came back with a 63,000 on Valcita, which we know for a fact we did the income survey two years ago and it was 36,500, so we can get that knocked out pretty easily. But I gotta get, uh, we're gonna probably do a survey for about 10 grand for doing the uh, medium also in the force metals. And hopefully we'll get the cooperation that we got out of Valcita where we can get the, go back into the 100% grant thing. But we, because we're still, talking to the county about why the landfill isn't open right now. They're looking for revenue. We have money and, and we don't, we still can't figure that out. So the Vallecito income is, is 36,000, but over a hundred thousand in Forest Meadows. Yeah. Which guy lives there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't, I thought, I mean, I just ran by the homeowners after I saw the thing back from the city. Do you guys believe this number? And they said, uh, no. So what we're going to have to do is, in order to get that number knocked out, we're going to have to do the same thing we did at Val Cedar. We'll hire an independent company to come in. They do a survey, and people respond. If you get a certain amount of responses, then they get certified to the state, and we can get the income changed to what, per, per, what it is. You know what they do is they get some intern in there that draws lines around stuff. They don't actually have our specific service area, so they seem to include other areas in our, in our income. That's kind of what kills us. Okay. So we're probably going to get two of those things going. There's a lot of social security taxes that are like, that can't be right. That's, that's what we think, too. You know, right, let's, let's, let's do the study. Let's go. Bill Gates relatives. We got living in the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
that's, we're going to have to do it because other than that, we're going to kill them. We get 37% of 50% uh, of the grant right now because of the uh, people in the forest metals. Are we um, applying for the grants for the drought grant, uh, IRWM, for Sheep Ranch? Sheep Ranch, we were told by the uh, CDPH that if we have to start trucking water and things like that, that we can get reimbursement for it. So that's who the stocking office. Well, there's uh, IRWM money uh, for this uh, through UMRA. I was just curious if we were going to apply for that. I don't really know what we would do with that because right now I'm on mineral release, which is 600 gallons of medical down there. Uh, the pipeline is, I don't know, the pipeline, whole, that whole pipeline needs to be replaced, but I, I don't know, I think if Larry or somebody talked to me about that, I don't know if we, we could actually quantify or even take a wild guess of how much water loss we get going down that pipe. Yeah, I know. Is that part of the criteria, Don? Or? It's drought money. You just yeah. have to be able to tie it. You could do it for leakage if the pipe's in bad shape. Pipes in bad shape, but we don't know if we can actually prove any leakage at all. It's only, I mean, it's uh, those pumps at the bottom of the hill are only about uh, 30 gallons a minute. I mean, it's a mile and a half pipe, I and mean, it's a pretty good size pipe. It goes from diverted all the way down. Actually, it goes all the way through the Frico City down the right of passage. Okay. So, I don't know. We would, somebody asked me something about that, and uh, we just looked at it. We, we didn't think we were eligible or we could get anything out of it. I mean, the best thing to do we could do is to replace the pipeline. Other than that, but we have reduced the release from white pines to the bare minimum, which is approximately 600 gallons a minute. Yeah, no doubt replacement's a costly project. We just don't know if we could prove bang for the buck to the state. It's on, on the UMRA list, mm -hmm. so it might, it might be eligible. Was your conversation before they, they had the drop declaration or afterwards? The, you said the conversation about the value and, and, and whether whether or not it would be cost effective to replace that pipeline. Well, we, well, we know we know what, from the district's point of view, it's not cost effective. Okay. okay. So you only get uh, thirty-seven people. Well, there. I understand that, but but was that conversation prior to the drop declaration? Because that's no, what we, Don's talking about. We, we've been having constant conversations before the curtailment notice was issued. We were actually CDPH had already called us up and told us that something was coming down the pipe, and me, Larry and myself were on a conference call with them. And they were kind of surprised that we hadn't got the letter and stuff because they had this map, this list of people that wanted to listen. We, this stuff's been, we haven't sat on this, it's been going on for months now. So we've been going back and forth with anybody who's got any money, USDA, SRF, CD, CDPA, anybody who's got any money out there. We've been trying to figure out what angles we could get and stuff. Um, CDPH only has like $15 million for leak detection. What they were more concerned about is extending water lines to people that actually don't have water. Yeah, if you're talking about, you know, we I looked at that pipeline before, yeah, it probably needs to be replaced, but then again, you're also dealing with only 37 customers down there. So, you know, plan B would be in case, and this has happened to us before, is when we lose the pipeline or the diversion, what we've done is we basically just hire somebody and just fill the tank up like once or twice a week maybe. So it's about maybe five grand every couple of weeks to fill up. We use, I think you were asked, we use Eldorado water and shower. So I mean, that's what, that's what you're really dealing with there. And what CDPH told me was, is, okay, if you get uh, stuck doing something like that, just send us the bill and we'll reimburse you guys for it. I know okay. the IRWM money was Sounds like an item we need to agendize. <clears throat> We'll talk about it yeah, for let's 10 move minutes. on uh, on on these re reports. Any anything further? Uh, anything in addition? My golf game is pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, we met with both golf courses and we found all the issues with uh, with the water. With the water okay. issues, yeah, flying eight is about to be done completely by the end of July. And we need to start getting more people moved on. That's it. All right, thank you, Bill. Good good to see you at the meeting. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Board reports, information, future agen agenda items. I, I, have, I have an agenda item. I'm, 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 uh, I'm curious as to what, we're, what, what the status is of our old facility. Um, I know that I went over there, I saw we've made repairs to it. I understand it's being occupied. I'd like to know what the cost of, of our utility bills and things of that nature are. And then also as to whether or not it is um, even proper for it to be occupied. Um, we don't have any staff members down there that I'm aware of, so I just think that we need to have some sort of report to make sure that we're not doing anything that is going to get us in trouble. Future agenda item. 
What, who's, what's it being occupied for? I, I can't tell you for sure. Okay. But I know it's being occupied. Future agenda item? The old, uh, old office building. Okay. Anything, any other? Uh... No, that's it. Director Stump. Uh, tomorrow I'm, um, I have to go to Tahoe for a panel on drought effects upon districts. Um, everyone seems to be real nervous how all the districts are gonna deal with the costs associated with the drought on the budgets of the districts. So got that and then on the, like I explained earlier, I've got a meeting on the 18th uh, regarding Wild and Scenic and then we have an UMRA meeting on the 20th. That's it. Director Dean. Um, I'll be at the same conference that uh, Donna's gonna be at, and uh, there's lots to talk about, but nothing, nothing of any great moment, so. Okay. I'd like to make a, uh, a, a suggestion or, or make a change to one of our uh, standing ad hoc committees. I'd like to remove uh, Director Stump from the Operation Headquarters Committee and I'll and replace him with, uh, with myself. Uh, so the Operation Headquarters meeting uh, or committee will be Director Davidson as the, as the lead and, and I will take uh, Director Stump's place. Um, also, we do have that uh, camera meeting and it appears to be a, a conflict with another, another meeting on the 18th. We're supposed to be meeting here or we, it's currently scheduled to meet here at 2.30 2 on, uh, on Wednesday the 18th. Um, and, and I'm not quite sure, uh, according to Director Stump, we may not have a quorum if everyone, uh, if everyone goes to that uh, other meeting. We may want to look into, into that. Okay. Actually, I thought the camera started at 1.30. 1.30 is Oh, 1.30. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. We do have, the, have a workshop. And, and uh, yeah, we may want to look in to make sure we have a, a quorum before that uh, is set. Okay. That's... Uh, that's all we got for uh, board reports, information, future agenda items. Um, item 12, next board meetings, Wednesday, June 25th, 2014, 9 a.m., uh, a regular board meeting right here in this room. And again on uh, Wednesday, July 9th, 2014, 9 a.m., regular board meeting right, right here. Uh, we're going to recess into uh, closed session and take a, a short uh, five-minute break before we, uh, we start of our closed session item. Read, read what it is. Is everybody going to stay? Closed oh, closed, closed session. I'm sorry. Public uh, uh, public employment, general manager recruitment, um, government code five four nine five seven. Thank you. Is everybody staying for closed session? You guys staying? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm not. I got to get up the hill.